Welcome back, everyone. We're going to take a look at a popular topic that everybody at some point wants to know how to do with their games, and that's how to use the file system so you can read and write data to the disk or to your device so that you can do things like save user settings, high scores, uh, you can load up levels, and things like that. So let's get started. Um, just to do a first note here, Game Maker's help file is actually pretty good on this system or on this section here. You'll see here if you just type file in their index search, uh, we're going to be doing the first one, which is called INI files. And their uh, commands and their examples are actually pretty good. So I'll just walk you through a few of the basics and a few really good examples how to use it. So what I have set up here is we're going to do a little program where I load and save just a few global variables that I have set here. So here's some global variables I've made in an object. One's called difficulty, which is one, two, or three, and difficulty text, which is easy, medium, and hard. And in my program to test it, I can hit a button here to change the difficulty, save it, and then I can reload it back up again. And of course, in your game, you would put these save and load commands, you know, wherever appropriate. So let's take a look at how to actually do this stuff. Uh, the first file system we're talking about is the INI file, so initialization files. They're pretty easy to use, and they involve, you save a file uh, with sections and key values uh, that point to data. Here's an example of one right here that I've sort of made up, just to show you what your text file ends up looking like in the system after you've made it. So you'll see here there's sections that you get to name. They're in the square brackets, and then there's keys like name and then the value right it points to a string here's age is the key and it points to a real number 19 and it sort of goes on and on so you can see here you can have sections and each section can have its specific keys that point to values for you uh, these INI files are usually meant to be a bit more lightweight you know you're not saving several meg of data in here but the kind of stuff I'm showing you here is perfect you could easily load up contents of a room in here as well. If you uh, wanted to save like a list or a grid or a map in here, that's no problem. Uh, but you know, for smaller files, let's check out how to make these things. So you'll see in my example here, I have two scripts, save data and load data. And I've just attached those to the save and the load button. So let's go take a look at save data and see what it is doing. So save data here, this is really it. So you're probably smiling going, that's so easy. You'll see here the first command is you open up an INI file. And when you open up these files, you can only have one open at a time. Okay, there's another type of file we'll take a look at later, which is just your basic text files. Okay, not like that. One at a time. And so you see when I'm done with it, I close it right away. So first thing you'll see here is this variable from GameMaker called working directory. If you're just practicing on your uh, local system, you can actually leave that part out. But what that gets you is GameMaker, basically, that's the directory structure that points you to the right folder, you know, on the device. Um, notice, I didn't put a slash here. I see a lot of tutorials that have a slash. I could be wrong, but GameMaker's docs say that the slash at the end is included inside this working directory variable. And so you just sort of do this every time I open and shut my files. I've called my file mydata.ini. You have to use ini at the end. Okay, that's a rule. And once you have it open, here are the commands, or some of the commands that help you write to the file. If you know you're writing a number, you use ini write real. You name a section level. You name the key value difficulty, and then you give it the value that you want to put in there. So you'll see here, section, key, value. Okay, pretty straightforward. Just write on a piece of paper what your sections and your keys are so you don't always have to keep popping back and forth to check. You'll see when I want to write a string, level, difficulty text, the difficulty text variable that I had before. Here I'm just writing some extra string to make a point, a section called extra, extra one ABC, and a number in this extra section, extra two, one, two, three, and then I close that down. Now, if I actually give this a run, and then I go and look at the file that it's made, so my data INI, 
you can actually find that inside your uh, system and the default installation of game maker saves it in users get your user app data local find the project and my project was work with data one and that's where it saves it and so there it is there's my data so let's just go check out what's in there and when I pop it open you'll see there's my level my difficulty my difficulty text my extra one extra two okay it's saved there now I can see that the numbers actually have quotes that's okay I left that out of my little sample file but the concept right the same so knowing what it looks like how do you actually read the values out of here well all you have to know is as long as you know your sections and as long as you know your keys right the key name you can basically read these values out now you should remember whether they're strings or numbers okay that that's part of the uh, your job here so let's go see how the read works the read is all in load data so when I go to load the data you'll see here whoa let's open this up you do a similar task open the same I and I file and now let's read the values out so I and I read a real value out so that's for numbers give me the level section difficulty key and this last value here is the default value so let's say it goes to read this and it goes into the level section looks for the difficulty key if it's not there or can't find this section in this key then it's still gonna send back a default value for us it'll send back one so this is nice if it's maybe the first time the user you know is run your program and this key or it hasn't been generated yet by some previous save okay you can give it these default values so here I've defaulted to one when I read the text in you read a string and I've given it a default of easy and I've done the same thing here for extra one and extra two now always make sure to close the file because like we said before you can only have one open at a time okay unlike the text files and so you should always just use it and close it right away okay so you don't have trouble now when we actually see this working how can we tell it's working well let's just give this a little test run here I've written some other code in this program inside the draw event it's drawing these variables out right here and so we're just gonna see the difficulty and the difficulty text variable but let's just do this simple test I'll click here I'll change it to hard so three hard I'll give that a save and now let's just change it back to let's say medium now I'm gonna load up and when I load well it's running that code you just saw back here it's gonna load up and change those variables and I should see the change drawn out So here we go and bam three and hard so it's loading those variables up nicely great huh I mean that's the basics of uh, using these I and I files you can have lots of sections lots of keys and there's a lot of other commands that go along with these I and I files for instance if I just pop into the help file here you're gonna see here you can write real write string so we saw that um, we have the read real read string and these are some other nice ones here if key exists maybe before you try to read a key you want to know if it exists or not maybe that'll let you know whether a user you know is saved or done something in your game so you can use a if key exists you can test if a section exists you can delete a key at some point if you know you don't need it anymore etc etc so you know that pretty well walks you through there and those commands in game maker help will help you out definitely now that's the basics now moving on from those basics how can you actually use this in your game to do a little more well definitely this idea is powerful but another powerful idea and I do three of them here is loading and saving from lists because lists are definitely if uh, you've watched some other videos in this course we've already talked about lists and uh, grids and maps how these work I'm just gonna go over quick examples that are pre-coded and just go over the basics for you um, the list one will basically save stuff to a list load it from a list definitely worth a watch list with keys is very similar worth a watch and grid grid is a great one this is one where I'm actually gonna scan the room for types of objects save where and what they are inside of a grid save that grid into the I and I file with some commands and then when you load you can load basically the room 
in the state that it was before, putting objects back exactly where they were. So it could be really useful for like saved games. Okay, so check that out. Hope this gives you a little basic intro and uh, we'll see you in the next video.